Next up is a little bit of a change of uh, direction, but not a whole lot. Uh, Mason Arnold is with a company called Greenling, and uh, you've heard me uh, uh, talk about Greenling. Uh, they've been a guest on the show. They're doing uh, the uh, distribution of organic uh, foods, produce, and uh, things in uh, several different markets, and the company is doing very well and growing. Mason Arnold is here to talk to us today about eating local and the uh, uh, farm to market foods. Mason? Thank you, Phil. All right, we're in the home stretch. How about everyone take a big deep breath? You then. So I uh, begrudgingly ate really good food as a kid. Lots of uh, wholesome grains, none of the sugary cereals, and uh, lots and lots of vegetables. Unbeknownst to me, I was raised by organic hippies. And for the longest time, I just thought they were being frugal, passing that cigarette around in that circle. I learned a little better later. We had a garden. It was a big garden. And I had to eat. It takes a while sometimes. Uh, I had to eat, eat a lot of strange vegetables from that garden. But even being raised by certified hippies, we didn't try to grow all of our own food. So it kind of begs the question of what, what do we eat when we can't? grow all of our own food and, and how do we eat for sustainability and for our health without turning into full-time farmers. It's the noblest profession on the planet, uh, but I just don't want to be a farmer. So, um, and who am I anyways? So I was born and raised in Austin, Texas, got a degree from UT in chemical engineering, and I think that degree gave me kind of a special insight on the chemical industry and the dominance it has had over our food system in the last 50 years. My first job out of college was for an environmental consultant firm and I was seeing firsthand what was being dumped on our environment here in Texas right outside of the cities. And it literally made me sick to my stomach. I decided that I had to do something to try to change that. So my first company was Earth Action Lawn and Landscape Environmentally Responsible Land Care. And that's how I met Garrett about, uh, I think, almost 12 years ago now. And he was certainly a role model for me. I grew that company and then really started to find my true passion, which is food. Along the way, the, um, Howard also talks about uh, the Organic Advisory Board to the Texas Department of Agriculture. Back in 2007, I drafted the legislation and lobbied for it that created that advisory board as a way to try to promote more organic agriculture and organic growing methods. I also helped bring a movement to Texas called Slow Money. Is anyone familiar with Slow Money? Not really. So kind of a challenge. We've got a lot of people that are thinking about organic agriculture and local food systems, and many of them are trying to do it with very little, if any, money. And so Slow Movement aims to try to articulate the non-financial returns of investing in local food and organic food and bring more dollars to the industry to help grow it. And uh, there's a great book that I think it's uh, called Investigating the Nature of, of Slow Money, Investing as if, as if Farm Fertility and Food Matters by Woody Tash. And I saw him speak and decided that I, that I wanted to help bring this movement to Texas. We've got a, a nonprofit that does education and also we created an investment group that gives out creative financing loans and investments to uh, small farms and, and local producers. Uh, also, about eight years ago, I started Greenling.com. It started with the idea of a better way to get food from the farm to the table. It's an uh, online ordering interface. We work directly with local farms and deliver directly to the home for about the same price as a grocery store, the farmer's market, and free delivery. Been doing it for about eight years down in Austin. In 08, we expanded to San Antonio. Last year, we launched up here in DFW, and in a couple of weeks, we'll actually be launching in Houston. Uh, Greenling and I have been recognized in over 20 different awards, including Best Local Food Company in Austin for six years running, and national awards from Dell and, and PC Magazine for the innovation that, that we're trying to bring to the food system. The Tony talked about vegetables being really scarce in the wintertime. Uh, well, we've got them. We've got farmers that are growing and growing successfully, and our, our best item is called a local box, and it's $35. It's a Meta CSA product, so it features three to six different farmers, and it changes every week, and it's just whatever is fresh and in season. 
we also deliver the crazy water out there. I just discovered that product recently and I'm, I'm hooked. I'm drinking a couple liters a day uh, right now. Um, so uh, we're here today to talk about healthy living and I think a healthy planet. And I'm here to talk about how important food is to both of those. When I started researching sustainability, it turns out that food was one of three critical challenges I think we're facing as a culture, in, along with energy and water. And with food, we actually have the opportunity to significantly affect the other two as well. The food industry consumes more fossil fuels than anything other than our cars driving around. It also consumes four times the potable water of all other human consumption combined. All of our showers, all of our drinking water, everything else that we do with water, agriculture consumes four times as much water. If we can fix the food system, so many things take care of themselves. And fixing the food system also fixes our healthcare system. How many of you know that four of the top five diseases and 75% of our healthcare spending is used to treat diet-related disease. Overall health, I think, is about 80% diet. Exercise is important, but food can heal us, and food is what keeps us healthy, even if we leave a relatively, live a relatively sedentary lifestyle. And diet is all about nutrients and the nutrient density that, that we've been talking about. It's not about low fat, low sodium. They've proven now that fat doesn't make you fat, High salt does not cause hypertension. Even they've just proven that eating cholesterol does not raise blood serum cholesterol levels. The important part about all of these is what is the source of that food and what's the integrity of the growing methods and where that food came from. So there's two simple principles in food that I think get us 80% of the way towards a sustainable food system. It's organic growing methods and local sourcing. Each one alone is far better than the conventional food system that we're currently all participating in. And organic versus local, I think, is a case-by-case -case argument. And organic plus local combined is kind of is what we call sustainable agriculture. And that's really the holy grail of what we're looking for in food. So when it comes to um, food, we have the tools right now to mostly make our food system sustainable. USDA organic is not perfect and the further you get away from the field the more complex the issues get with it but in general we want to avoid processed foods anyway but uh, organic agriculture and organic products are always better than conventional there's a great website out there called what's on my food.org they even have an iphone app you can look up on your iphone just what's on my food.org and they test every year thousands of different food items for chemical residues and they show conventional versus organic versions. And it's absolutely amazing. The conventional products of everything that we eat has between five and 50 different chemical residues on it. Most of them are hormone disruptors, cancer causing, completely toxic chemicals. And the organics have zero to one or two. And most of those are from drift from conventional farms. So the more organic we have, the less drift we're gonna have in those organic samples, we'll get down to zero. But aside from that, organic agriculture has also been proven to use up to 50% less water than conventional agriculture. It controls erosion, helps control floods, and is more drought resistant than conventional agriculture. And these are decades long worldwide studies. I have a reference list if anyone is interested after the talk. And of course, if all agriculture was organic, we would eliminate the almost one trillion pounds of toxic chemicals that are being poured onto American soil every single year. Every year, another trillion pounds of chemicals gets poured into our environment, and the vast majority of it is ending up in our food, it's ending up in our water, and it's ending up in our bodies. Also, 80% of the energy consumed in agriculture is after it's ready to eat. Only 20% of the energy is from seed to harvest. The rest is in distribution, storage, and processing. The vegetable in the store, on average, travels 1,800 miles to get there. Even the, taking the average of the myriad definitions of local, because there's a lot of different, different definitions out there, and indeed it's different by region, 
still uses 60% less energy than conventional agriculture. Also, local food is allowed to ripen on the vine. When things are picked green, studies are showing that many nutrients are formed during the ripening process on the vine. So you pick it green, it just doesn't have those nutrients, and they let the products ripen on the way to the store. Local food, local farmers let them ripen on the vine because they know it's a shorter time and a shorter distance to get to the table. So you're going to have more nutrient density in local food than you have in food that's coming from far away. So if all, or, all agriculture was organic and local, we'd have three times as much water as, as we currently have for everything else. And we'd also have more than twice as much energy based on current consumption to use on other things. And yet local and organic are still less than 5% of the food system. Fix the food system and so many other things take care of themselves. And we as consumers have the greatest power over this challenge. We don't have to go build our own wind turbines and develop new solar technology. Every time we pull out our wallet and we pay for food, we're telling the food system to replace whatever we just bought with one more of what we just bought. So every single time we eat, we are in absolute control of the food system. And we have the power to move that more towards sustainability just by what we choose to eat. So just like every vote counts, it may be small things, but the small things add up. Every bite counts when it comes to the food system. So I think I've got a little bit of time here for if anyone has questions about food. I've been following the organic uh, industry since the NOP was created in 2002. Local food. Hold on. Yeah. Would you please say a little more about greenling.com? Uh, what, what products, what times of year? Just expound on it, please. I'm interested. Sure, sure. So uh, greenling.com is uh, year-round. We have the full selection of the grocery store for food. So our focus is on local, and our mantra is as close as possible. But we also want to make local and organic food more accessible for everyone. So anything that we can't get locally, we still get certified organic from California or Colorado, unless the only source is some source that, that we don't believe in. And we investigate every company that we work with, even the national distribution companies. So we don't work with companies like Horizon. We think they're trying to get around the organic regulations. We carry organic Valley milk for the non-local, but locally we have milking. And so everything from produce to dairy to meats to breads and cereals and grains, it's all online. You can see what's available, what's local, what's not, which farmers are growing which foods, and create orders. Right now in the DFW, we're delivering once a week. So depending on where you live, you have a delivery day, and that's how we make the delivery aspect sustainable. In Austin, we're, we're testing twice a week delivery, and we're going to spread that up here in, in a few months. But you can get orders up to once a week. There's no commitment. There's no membership fee. Start or stop anytime. And just uh, anytime you want good food, you go online and place an order, and it comes right to your door. Let's talk about this. Deal. What's the website? Oh. Uh, greenling.com, the color green, and then ling.com. And somebody uh, is going to win a prize from Greenling. You wanna... Yeah, we've got a, a local box that we are giving away here. And the winner is Robert Nelson from Bedford, Texas. Is he here? Oh, well, we'll have to get it to him. As, as far as the deliveries, are, is it, uh, if you're working, do they leave it on the porch or that kind of thing? Yeah, yeah. So we developed uh, basically a technology with these attached lid totes and some insulating factors that we can leave a basket on someone's porch for up to four hours. And that, and before it even reaches room temperature. So that's the window that we say, and you can get morning or afternoon, evening deliveries. And the milk, we have cold packs inside for milk and the frozen meats and such that keep hold those for four hours as well. So you don't need to be home. It stays fresh. What was the name of the book by Woody Tash? The book is... <sighs> If you search for slow money, you'll find it, but I think it's technically called um, The Nature 
of slow money investing as if farm fertility and food matters. He's, he's passionate about his work, maybe not the best marketer, but the or name in his book. Sounds like a bad name in some of my books. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay, thank you. Thanks, thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for having me.